Hello there, I'm Shane O'Donoghue, and I'm about to go on a golfing voyage of discovery to find out more about an iconic American golfer who was massively famous in the 1920s. But what's most intriguing about him is his backstory, because his parents came from a little town about 50 miles from here. I'm leaving my home county of Tipperary, headed due north to neighbouring County Leash and the town of Boris and Ossery, where the real story of Hall of Fame golfer Johnny Farrell truly begins. So in May of 2020, I was contacted by a lady called Mary Kay Wilson, who it turns out was the granddaughter of the great Johnny Farrell, the winner of the US Open in 1928. Now what she was curious about was any extra detail that I could glean about the exhibition match that he played in the Hermitage Golf Club in 1929 when he was the reigning US Open champion. So I was intrigued, not only about his golfing prowess, but also about his Irish roots. For a kid in rags to grow up, and experience this luxurious lifestyle because of the game of golf gave him tremendous pride, but also a sense of duty to the game. He's an incredible player, a player of 1927 and had eight wins in a row, a three-time Ryder Cupper, a US Open winner, and then a legendary uh, career as a club professional as well, a famous character and famous gentleman. Without a question, one of the finest gentlemen I ever met in my life. And above all, an extremely, extremely conscientious family man. What a man. Johnny Farrell is an old friend. I first met Johnny Farrell at Baldus Hall, but I knew of his record. Johnny was a good player. Everybody had great respect for and had a great record in his days. Now I'm driving to a townland called Kyle, about three miles from Boris to the graveyard where Johnny's grandparents are buried and to meet four of his cousins. To begin with, I didn't know anything about Johnny until an uncle of mine, he told me the story about Johnny. And then as, as years went by, I began to sort of research it more and more. Johnny's dad and Johnny's mother left at a very young age to go to America. They weren't married at the time and they married in the States. For these young people to head off to America at that time must have been like something, you know, out of a movie. James Farrell and Catherine Breen emigrated from Ireland in 1895. They married and settled in New York and had three children, James, Margaret and young Johnny. After James's untimely death, the young family found themselves alone in a new world, under pressure as immigrants, struggling to make ends meet. By the time Johnny was eight, he decided to leave school to earn money and followed his older brother Jimmy to Siwanoi Country Club to run errands, shag balls and learn to caddy. So Johnny had to go out and seek work at a very young age and that's what he did. He taught himself how to play golf and then gradually over the years it was apparent that he had a fantastic aptitude for golf. It must be in the genes because it's percolated down our side of the family over here. There's a lot of good golfers there as well. Spotted by the renowned amateur Jerome Travers, he availed of lessons from the great man who would go on himself to win the US Open in 1915 at Baltus Roll. Travers was the one who rounded up a group of investors from the Quaker Ridge membership to fund Johnny Farrell's initial exploits on the new PGA circuit. Although winless for his first couple of years, he continued to improve and won the admiration of all of the top players like Gene Sarazen and Tommy Armour, pictured here. So much so that when he entered the 1927 season, he was almost unstoppable. You will play a better game and you folks who are just about to take up the game may gain pointers by observing my play. But it was 1928 that would define his career. The 1928 U.S. Open was held at Olympia Fields outside of Chicago, and Johnny found himself tied with the crown favorite and iconic figure, amateur Bobby Jones, after 72 holes. This meant a 36-hole playoff the next day, which was a Sunday. That Sunday, the final 36-hole playoff with Bobby Jones 
was going to interfere with Mass. Bobby Jones agreed that Johnny should attend Mass. As a result, Bob and Johnny started the playoff a little later than they had planned. I think it's safe to say he had a very blessed round after that. For Johnny Farrell to win the 1928 US Open, he beat the great Bobby Jones at the peak of his powers. He birdied the final two holes of the 36 hole playoff to beat Jones by one. Quite frankly, it's the stuff of fairy tales. This is the seventh tee at Hermitage Golf Club in Lucan, just a couple of miles from Dublin city centre. And it was here in 1929 that Johnny Farrell took part in an exhibition match. Johnny Farrell retired young, aged 33, from the grind of tournament play. He settled into a new life with his wife Catherine and their family as the head pro at the prestigious Baltus Road Golf Club in New Jersey a position he would hold with distinction for 43 years. During his time there, he would coach celebrities like Joe DiMaggio, the former King of England, Edward VIII, and was tutor to five US presidents. The rise of Johnny Farrell is the quintessential American success story, but its roots lay here on the Emerald Isle. Irish as Irish can be, of course, nature and nurture, his genes are Irish and then moulded by America and the opportunities that America gave to a young boy like him who didn't have anything and had to go out and f f fend for himself and learn something and make something of himself. And that's the American story, extraordinary story. When I did my research, it became clear to me that there was an oversight and that he absolutely deserves to be in the, in the World Golf Hall of Fame. So I'm so glad that I was approached back then and that the committee agreed with the history books that Johnny is a totally deserving member of the Hall of Fame. To start in rags and to have this story end in riches, it's just more than anybody could have ever imagined.